So I am really enjoying my Ambernick RG35XX. I mean, look at this incredible Pokemon theme I have on it. It's absolutely fantastic. Link to that video in the description down below, of course. But there's one problem. There's one thing about it that's absolutely driving me insane that it has to do with this D-pad. Hopefully you're seeing some footage of this right now, but basically when you're hitting left or right and you move to a diagonal, you, you go slightly up or down with that left or right, you will start going up or down instead. In particular, in games like Pokemon, this is very, very annoying. So in this video, we're cracking this thing open. We're gonna use a little bit of electrical tape and we're gonna fix that problem. Okay, so we have the RG35XX here. I've taken the SD cards out. I assume that's probably a smart thing to do. And we're gonna try and pop this thing apart and modify around this D-pad to resolve the problem that I should have talked about earlier on in the video. So we need to determine which size I need here. Which I think that one is going to work. It felt like it bit decently well, so we'll we'll see here if it's able to do that without any risk of stripping anything out, which it appears is not going to be a problem. I don't know if that's exactly the one that I needed to use. Uh, but whatever, it's working, so we're going to roll with it. The fact that the screws are sticking to it tell me that that's probably not exactly the right thing to be using, but it was the only one that I had that was going to fit. So whatever, it's fine. We've done it. It's over with anyways. Almost just lost a screw to keep all those together. And let's see how easy it's going to be or not be to pop the thing apart. Let's use a little flathead here. Okay, so that required a little bit of pressure there because it does feel like it kind of snaps together. But now that we're moving, okay, there's another pop. There's another pop. There's another pop. And you can see here, there are little, little clips there that are uh, holding this thing together that we're sort of moving along and at that point I feel like we've totally come loose okay so we've we've lost a button here we'll have to make sure that our volume goes back in the proper orientation you can also see here that's the battery as well as the cable that connects the battery so we are going to disconnect that which you can do just by pulling on it. Took more pressure, more force than I expected, but that is now gone. If you want to know the size of the battery, it is 2100 milliamp hours. That's pretty cool. Okay, so now we got to get to the other side of the board, which should just lift off, but let's set our power and reset buttons off. That's interesting. The power and reset are in one little conjoined thing. I don't think anything else should fall off at this point. So it should, should lift out of here, but it does feel like something is still holding it on. And that's because there is a little screw down there at the bottom. It's always important to take your time with these sorts of things and to look around. There are in fact three screws down here that are holding it on. Am I missing any of, there can't be any more screws up top because uh, that's where the screen is. But I just noticed underneath this little silver piece here, two more screws. So this board is uh, very, very well attached to the case. Almost like they don't intend on you doing this. Here's something I'm also going to do. This connects the speaker to the front. I think I'm going to unplug that as well so that the speaker can stay seated in there because I believe it is a, it's a separate module. So we've pulled that out as well. And let's just kind of fold that back out of the way. As we flip this out of the way, there's the screen and the ribbon that connects the screen. So what we're going to do as well, and I should have mentioned this already, I missed this, is we're going to flip this little black piece up here like that. You see how that's raised up now? And that should allow us to very gently disconnect the ribbon cable for the screen, which you can see is now disconnected. If you don't want to disconnect that cable you can just sort of flip it up forward and the board is now totally free 
And this is what we're looking at here. Now we need to make sure that we're looking at the correct uh, set of buttons, obviously. So we just need to remember that obviously our D-pad is on the left-hand side. And let's not lose any of these buttons. I'm just going to try to leave them sort of seated in there. You can also see from here that indeed these buttons are a rubber membrane. So whenever you press on one of the buttons, it just sort of raises up and makes a contact with these spots here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some electrical tape and we're going to kind of make a little X across this that I think will keep uh, accidental contacts from happening. Okay, and I'm hoping that that will work. I guess we'll find out after I put the thing <laughs> after I put the thing back together. But the idea here is that you know you're going to get less accidental diagonals from doing this. So now I have to reverse course and put this thing back together. Okay, as expected, that display ribbon was a colossal pain in the butt. Make sure all this stuff is exactly where it needs to be, and let's drop this back in. We can now reconnect that speaker, which should be easy enough. Notice when you're reconnecting the speaker, the orientation of the pins. See how the pins are on the lower side? That's how it needs to be. Don't jam it in there upside down, because that will also be a problem, obviously. So that is back in there now, I believe. Time to put those black screws back in. And now with the power, same thing, look and see where those pins are. They should be uh, oriented so that you're plugging it in this way with the pins towards the bottom. Just guide that in and pop it into place. Now I'm just gonna kind of hold this thing together like this and we're gonna pop in the SD cards, which it actually appears from this that you, you probably were okay to not remove them, but you know, better to be safe than sorry. We're going to pop them back in now that we're powered before I've really put everything back together. And we're going to power this thing up and see if this has done anything or if we have, in fact, made it worse. If the D-pad is even working at all now, we're going to find out. So it is still working. And you know what? So before, this would be triggering. <laughs> this has worked beautifully. No more am I getting, turn down my volume here, no longer am I getting, when I, when I go, you know, left or right, but push towards up or down, oh, I got a little bit of a down diagonal that way. Okay, but I, I have to do it very, very hard. So my down diagonal on the right side is still a little bit off, but everything else is pretty much perfect. Is this good enough or do we readdress? Okay, I've kind of replaced things a bit. It's not really much different, but we were really close. That's where we're at now. Let's see if that made any difference. And if it didn't, if it's the same as it was a minute ago, we're just gonna roll with that because it's already an improvement. And frankly, I don't wanna have to do this again. Okay, volume button, seating back in, power reset is back in. And you can see here how that power reset sits in. It actually kind of goes behind that little piece there. And we're just kind of we're gonna kind of just hold it together for the moment, snap it together like part way to make this easier to test again. But we're going to assume that we're probably in a good enough place so we can put these last screws back in. Okay, so no diagonal up or down, no diagonal up or down on that. We have totally fixed this mission, absolutely accomplished. And let's put these screws back in. We're just gonna drop these down into their holes to tighten down, and we're going to be careful not to over tighten them because I am not using the correct bit like I've mentioned, so I don't want to risk stripping these things out. So once they become, uh, I keep grabbing an extra screw that I don't need to. Once they become tight, as, as hard as this thing was to pop apart because of those clips, I don't think you're really gonna need a ton of a ton of uh, uh, force on these screws to hold it together. You're not gonna need to bust out the torque wrench or anything to get these things dialed in. Honestly, the buttons really don't even feel significantly different. Let's make sure my volume is fine that I put it in the right way. Plus and minus looking good, power reset. We are, we're solid guys.
So there you go, my first hardware mod on my Ambernick RG35XX. It's kind of a basic one, but I think it does the trick quite nicely. Guys, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more content just like this. I'll see you on the next one. Until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.